Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, January 25th, and here is your nightly update. And tonight I'll be talking about two things. One is Moscow, Idaho, and the other is everything that happened today in the opening statements of the Murdoch murder trials. So for Idaho, uh, Xana Canodal's mom, Kara, was actually on Banfield. Um, there's a few things to unpack with this. Um, this is the first time that she's spoken, and I think that the, the thing that they were talking about mainly is the fact that Ann Taylor, the person who is now representing Brian Koberger, um, was not only... Kara's attorney, her own public defender, but also her power of attorney, and that apparently when she resigned from representing uh, Xana's mom, Kara, she did not tell her. In fact, Kara found out via social media, actually through a friend via social media. So currently, for her legal issues, uh, Kara does not have any legal representation, and apparently she may have a warrant for failure to appear out, which, to my personal opinion on this, um, is that that would be the attorney's fault for not talking to her. Now, at the same time, I know a lot of y'all have said, well, why didn't she keep um, Xana's mom's case because she had it first? Well, here's why. Um, Ann Taylor is one of 13 attorneys, litigators in the entire state of Idaho that can litigate on a death penalty case, a capital punishment pay case. Um, in northern Idaho, she is the only one. Now, with all that said, um, attorneys brought this up. I don't know a lot about this, so I'll explain what they said. Um, Basically, that it could po pose a conflict of interest. If Brian gets convicted, gets a death penalty, he could possibly appeal and get the death penalty verdict overturned, given the fact that she used to rep her his attorney used to represent one of the deceased, the victim's mothers. Um, and they said that they were talking about why they weren't sure the prosecution filed something. I don't know what. I'm not an attorney. Switching to the Murdoch murders, they have a jury now. Uh, eight women, four men. And this was after going through 900 people. Opening statements were done with the prosecution basically saying that they found a raincoat at Alex's mom's house that he had taken over there, uh, wadded up essentially with GSR, which is um, gunshot residue all over it and in it. Um, they also say that they have cell phone evidence, pings, that show that Alec was there on the property the night that it happened and even near the dog pens where everything happened, um, even though Alex said he was not there. Now, Alex's attorney is a guy by the name of Dick Harputlian, and he is incredibly theatrical and an incredible attorney. And essentially, he tried to just get in front of the 911 call and the body cam saying that Alec was distraught, and that's why he was acting the way that he did, and that the police had already assumed that he was guilty because Alec had a gun when they showed up. And apparently, Alec's defense on that is that he had the gun in case the killer was still around. Now, testimony will start tomorrow. And the last thing I'll say is if you don't follow me already and you like these updates, please hit that follow button. And if you do see this and you don't already subscribe to me on YouTube, please do so. Justin on TikTok on YouTube as I'm trying to grow that. Um, and we will see you guys tomorrow with more updates.